la dominante, la serenissima, queen of the Adriatic, city of water, city of masks, city of bridges, the floating city, city of canals. This is all about Venice. The lagoon and a part of the city are listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Parts of Venice are renowned for the beauty of their settings, their architecture and artwork. Venice is known for several important artistic movements, especially during the Renaissance period, and has played an important role in the history of instrumental and operatic music and is the birthplace of Baroque composers Tommaso Albinoni and Antonio Vivaldi. Tourists arrive to Venice by boats, buses and trains. The central railway station is Venezia Santa Lucia. This must be one of the most amazing train stations in the world. Once travelers exit the building, they can see the Grand Canal, San Simeone Piccolo Church and Ponte degli Scalzi Bridge. The station is used by about 82,000 passengers per day or a total of around 30 million passengers per annum. Every day, approximately 450 trains stop at the station. Venice is famous for its classical bridges. Constitution Bridge is the fourth bridge over the Grand Canal. It was designed by Santiago Calatrava and was installed in 2008. It was adopted to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Italian Constitution. Tourists and locals in Venice now refer to it as the Calatrava Bridge. The bridge is situated at a strategic point connecting the railway station Santa Lucia with the Piazzale Roma, the city's arrival point by cars or buses. Nearby, there is Giardini Popadopoli terraced garden filled with the shade trees in the Venetian Sestiere of Santa Croce district. The gardens occupy the lands of the demolished monastery of Santa Croce. It's a nice place to rest and relax in a quiet and cool atmosphere while waiting for a train or a bus. Canareggio is the northernmost of the six historic sestieri of Venice. It is the second largest sestiere by land area and the largest by population. The Canareggio Canal, which was the main route into the city until the construction of a railway link to the mainland, gave the district its name. Canal Reggio is Italian for Royal Canal. Although elegant palazzos were built facing the Grand Canal, the area grew primarily with working class housing and manufacturing. Today, the areas of the district along the Grand Canal from the train station to the Rialto Bridge are packed with tourists, but the rest of Canareggio is residential and relatively peaceful, with morning markets, neighborhood shops and small cafes. Ponte delle Gulie is one of two bridges to span the Canareggio Canal. The spires lie at each end of the bridge. A carved balustrade runs on either side of the walkway and gargoyles decorate its arch. It is the only bridge in Venice adorned with spires from whence it takes its name. The bridge is way busy being on one of the most important streets of the city. The Strada Nuova that linked the Piazzale Roma, train station, Rialto and St. Mark. A little bit further on, there is the Rialto Market. Strada Nova is full of different restaurants and cafes, shops and supermarkets, but remember that most of them are concentrated on foreign tourists so prices sometimes are higher or the quality of souvenirs are worse than on other streets. 
The most famous sites on the street are Teatro Italia, Palazzo Diedo, La Maddalena Church, Santa Fosca Church, Palazzo Donna Giovanelli, Palazzo Giusti, Church of the Holy Apostles of Christ, the Cadoro, or Palazzo Santa Sofia Palace. I highly recommend leaving this street and going by side streets if you want to see how Venetians live, where they shop and eat. The further street is from the main attractions, the quieter and more atmospheric city becomes. And the prices are lower. Here you will see less popular but even more exciting places of interest. One of them is the Church of Santa Maria Sunta, known as Iesuiti which is located in the Sestiere of Canareggio in Campo dei Jesuiti, not far from the Fondamenta Nuova boat station. The first church on this place was built in far 1148, but it was destroyed and reconstructed several times until 1728. Since then it had this shape. The layout of the church is typical for Jesuit churches in the form of a Latin cross with three chapels in the longest wing. The interior was decorated by different famous artists like Giuseppe Toretti, Ludovico Dorini, Francesco Contebasso. There is also one work by Titian, the martyrdom of St. Lawrence. I'm sure that you will like this church. It's located pretty far from the main attraction, so only some visitors come here. For only 2 euro, you will see real masterpieces, which usually can be observed in the most popular museums for much higher prices. Enjoy the beauty in silence and loneliness. Fondamenta Nova is the gateway to the islands of the Northern Lagoon and is the last stop in Venice's historic center for Ali Laguna water buses that go to Marco Polo Airport. The station consists of four water bus platforms scattered along the northern edge of Venice's historic center, facing the Venetian Lagoon. Venice was created for walking around and searching for hidden treasures of bridges, streets or buildings. I also recommend giving up maps and just walk wherever artists look. You will be surprised how many interesting things are there. That's how I found this Ponte de l'Aquavita bridge on Calle Venier Street. The bridge and the small canal are charming.
On Calle Varisco, there is another remarkable but not so famous place. It's the narrowest street in Venice. Actually, it's only a part of the whole street, but it's really narrow that two people can pass each other at the same time. It's only about 50 cm wide. In Venice, there is the house of one of the most famous sailors, Marco Polo. Only the plaque on the wall of the building reminds of the importance of this place. The building is not available for tourists, unfortunately. All the roads in Venice lead to one of the most famous and recognizable bridges in the world, Rialto Bridge. It is the oldest of the four bridges spanning the narrowest point of the Grand Canal in the heart of Venice. Connecting the Sestieri of San Marco and San Polo, it has been rebuilt several times since its first construction as a pontoon bridge in 1173 and is now a significant tourist attraction in the city. The present stone bridge, a single span designed by Antonio da Ponte, was built in 1591. The bridge has three along the outer balustrades and a wider central walkway leading between two rows of small shops that sell jewelry, linens, runner glass and other items for the tourist trade. Near Rialto Bridge, there is T. Fondaco dei Tadeschi shopping center. First of all, it's a good place to hide from sunny and hot weather. Also, they have free restrooms, which is very important in Venice since most of them are paid. Another good thing, they provide free Wi Fi. The mall is full of high fashion boutiques, expensive salons, restaurants, and cafes. The main reason to go there is a rooftop terrace. It's also free, but you need to book a visit on their website in advance. They allow only 40 people at a time. Every 15 minutes, the groups are welcomed on the terrace. It features an overwhelming view of Venice. This magnificent place gives Tifon Daco a picture-perfect finish to its astounding transformation as Venice's new cultural and commercial epicenter.
cross Rialto Bridge and visit San Giacomo di Rialto Church. According to tradition, San Giacomo is the oldest church in the city, supposedly consecrated in the year 421. It has a large 15th century clock above the entrance, a useful item in the Venetian business district, but regarded as a standing joke for its inaccuracy. The Gothic portico is one of the few surviving examples in Venice. It has a Latin cross plant with a central dome. Inside the Veneto Byzantine capitals, on the six columns of ancient Greek marble date from the 11th century. Hunchback of the Rialto is a marble statue found opposite the church. Sculpted by Pietro da Salò, was used as a podium for official proclamations. When you are hungry, it's so easy to find a place for a meal. I found Meyer Cafe. There are several cafes of this brand around the city. Here, they cook and bake most common dishes and drinks. Pizza, sandwiches, wine and cocktails are in their menu. And in Venice, there is no meal without a spritz cocktail. The Campo San Polo is the largest campo in Venice, the second largest Venetian public square after the Piazza San Marco. It is located in the Sestiere San Polo, originally dedicated to grazing and agriculture. In 1493, it was entirely paved, a well-being placed in the middle. It was subsequently used as the scene of many bullfights, mass sermons and mask balls. After the 17th century, the poor's market was moved here from Piazza San Marco. It remains to this day one of the most popular carnival venues and is also used for open-air concerts and screenings during the Venice Film Festival. The Chiesa di San Nicolo da Tolentino, commonly known as the Tolentini, is a church in the Sestiere of Santa Croce, few steps from Piazzale Roma and the Papadopoli Gardens. The church contains the tombs of several doges. The interiors are finely decorated, any visitor would be astonished. This building, together with others, is a little treasure. Unfortunately, it is not so noticeable because it is lucky or unlucky to be in Venice, a city so rich of treasures that anything else is unnoticeable. Another hidden treasure is the Chiesa di San Pantaleone Martire, known as San Pantalon in the Venetian dialect, is a church in the Dorsoduro Sestiere. It is particularly well known for its immense ceiling painting, depicting the metadom and apotheosis of San Pantalon. It was painted on canvas by Gian Antonio Famiuni when he fell to his death from the scaffolding.
Campo dei Frari is a concentration of interesting places like Scuola Grande di San Rocco, the Church of St. Roche, and the Leonardo da Vinci Museum. But no one ever misses here the Basilica di Santa Maria Gloriosa dei Frari, usually just called the Frari, is a church at the heart of San Paolo district. The largest church in the city, it had the status of a minor basilica. The church is dedicated to the Assumption of Mary. The interior is notable for many very grand wall monuments to distinguished Venetians buried in the church, including a number of doges and the painter Titian. Many of these are important works in the history of Venetian sculpture, and the many paintings include two large and important altarpieces by Titian, the Assumption of the Virgin on the High Altar and the Pesaro Madonna. Ca' Foscari University of Venice is a public university. Since its foundation in 1868, it has been housed in the Venetian Gothic Palace of Cafoscari, from which it takes its name. The palace stands on the Grand Canal between the Rialto and San Marco, in the Incestiere of Dorsoduro. It is one of the highest-ranked universities in Italy. San Maurizio is a neoclassical style, the consecrated church located in the Campo San Maurizio in the Sestiera of San Marco. The Canadian family, called Sanudo, has given credit for the construction of the church. The church now houses the Museo della Musica, Museum of Baroque Instruments, Composers and Music of Venice. It features period instruments and documents including exhibits on Antonio Vivaldi. Entrance, as for 2021, is free. The church, whose name translates as St. Mary of the Lily, referring to the flower classically depicted as the being presented by the angel Gabriel during the Annunciation, is more commonly known as Santa Maria Zobenigo after the Giubenigo family who founded it in the 9th century. The Opera House Teatro La Fenice is one of the most famous and renowned landmarks in the history of Italian theatre and in the history of opera as a whole. Especially in the 19th century, La Fenice became the site where Rossini, Bellini and Verdi were played. The Palazzo Contarini del Bovolo is a small palazzo best known for its external multi-arch spiral staircase. The palazzo is located in a small, less traveled calle. The staircase leads to an arcade providing an impressive view of the city rooftops. <music>